I'm Chris McCusker in the 680 Business Center. Well, NAFTA talks are now on hold. They're set to pick up again Wednesday. Foreign Affairs Minister Krista Freeland says she believes a win-win-win on trade is still possible. And a U.S. representative says the talks have been constructive and progress is being made. Now, those trade issues might have investors concerned, along with trade issues between the U.S. and China. We are hearing the U.S. is prepared to slap another $200 billion in tariffs on Chinese goods. And despite those trade issues, the Nasdaq now coming off its best August in 18 years. It was up by 5.7%. Now, this past week, it got support from Apple and Amazon with both stocks hitting all-time highs, actually a couple all-time highs. Amazon, though, still shy of that $1 trillion market cap milestone. The stock did get an upgrade, which could push it over the top very, very soon, and it would join this exclusive club with Apple, which hit the $1 trillion market cap milestone earlier this summer. Uh, the Dow and the S&P, by the way, had the best August since 2014. TSX was down by about a percent in August. There was pressure on energy stocks this past week with that court ruling around the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Marijuana stocks still fairly volatile. Now, going back to Apple for a second, it's going to announce its latest iPhones at its annual fall event on September the 12th. There are reports out there as well that this event is going to be streamed live on Twitter. Normally, you can only watch it on Apple TV. The event is called Gather Round, which is a reference to the new facility, which is round. Uh, we're hearing from Apple watchers that uh, three new phones are expected to be announced. And photos of the iPhone XS have accidentally been leaked online. Shares in Apple did hit an all-time high on Friday, 228.87. Oh, and one other note here. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett said in an interview this past week that the iPhone is enormously underpriced. It's the end of the line for Town Shoes. The Ohio-based retailer says increasing competition in the footwear market and significant operating losses are to blame. So all 38 stores in Canada will close by the end of its financial year in January. About 400 employees affected will be moved to DSW Shoe Company, Shoe Warehouse, and the DSW Brands. Now, Town Shoes, first created in Toronto way back in 1952 by entrepreneur Leonard Simpson. And looking ahead, the Bank of Canada will make an interest rate announcement on Wednesday. No change is expected at this meeting. In fact, Bloomberg is pricing in just a 10% chance of an interest rate increase. There is an 81% chance in October. As well, this week we get earnings from HBC, Kushtard, and Dell. I'm Chris McCusker in the 680 Business Center for City News.